My objective tonight is to teach you about two things primarily. Each sign is like the baby growing up, and it has nothing to do with maturity, who's childish, who's not childish. This is why you know old people and they seem real young, and you know young babies and they seem real old. That's what I'm talking about, the archetype. When I talk about an Aries or a Scorpio, I'm not talking about the Scorpio you know down the street, there's one guy. Because you can have five different signs in your chart. And you often do. But I'm talking about your central essence. This describes the archetype that's underneath it. And the main thing we're going to talk about is why is your sign the way it is? Why does it change? It can go no further. And it morphs into the next sign. That's how the zodiac works. I don't know why. But it does, and I'll guarantee you that. And that's what the book is about in great detail. The book is short. We purposely went over every single word closely to make it economical. It reads real easily, and I really uh, encourage you to read it twice, because everybody's going to turn to their chapter of their sun sign. But, <laughs> but that's really not the way to read it. You need to read read the whole book because it puts you in perspective. And exquisite means how, like lace work, how the zodiac is woven together. The zodiac we know, the western zodiac, is based upon the seasons. And as a matter of fact, it's really based upon the northern hemisphere. Because March 20th is spring here, but it's not spring down in, in the Rio de Janeiro. But it's really based upon the relationship our zodiac is based upon how far away were you born from the moment of spring. The astronomers, who think they've got us, have a sidereal zodiac. They're lined up with the actual constellations. We don't care where the constellations are. Even though we talk about it, it's very confusing. Anyhow, in the beginning there was the birth, and the birth was a sign of Aries. Who are Aries people? <laughs> okay. The one thing that you always notice with Aries people, born in March 20th to about April 20th, is they have a spark of light. They're very much like that glint that you see, it's childlike glint that you see out of Jack Nicholson. That, that, that little look that you see out of uh, um, Winona Judd, is that her name? Ashley Judd. Ashley Judd. That real childlike. Who's the girl in, um, in uh, Raising Arizona? Holly. Holly Hunter. That childlike, mischievous girl next door. Get away with murder. They're just innocent. So you'll hear all these cruel things said about Aries. And you'll hear cruel things said about all the signs, really. Because each sign has a dark side. When you're not using... When you're not using your light side properly. But basically, we're all doing the best we can. We all have an essence. Well, the Aries is what I call in the book what Castaneda called a tremor in the air. You could talk to your blue with any Zen master, but in the beginning, there was a tremor in the air. I don't know how it happened. Big Bang theorists don't know. But somehow this phenomenal God that we have wanted to be in some state that he's in a, he or she is in a constant state of becoming. And that's what's at the center of Aries. That's why they don't stop at red light. <laughs> They don't want to be bothered. They don't want to slow down. Okay? They, they, got, they want a gas pedal. They don't have stop signs. They don't have a brake. Let's just go. They're very impatient. They will drive you nuts. And they just want to go, 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 go. Because they're all about one word, which is adventure. Everything is adventure. And if you're with them and you're not into adventure, you are a drag. <laughs> I mean, they need adventure, and maybe you're a different sign and you don't. That's one of the great things of this book, is that you understand other people's needs. 
So, of course, in the zodiac, Aries is indicative of the baby who was just born, and he cries if he wants something now. It's a very simple sign. It is a fire sign. Fire, it's cardinal, it's a leader. These are all explained in the book in details. Fire means let's get up and go. Why? Because God wants to experience himself. It's so hard to think back to that pure state and how many phenomenal minds we have had born in Aries. James Hillman, Joseph Campbell, Ram Dass. So many great minds because they're so adventurous. You know, Captain Kirk, Spock, we're both Aries. Let's go. <laughs> they're both Aries. I mean, when you were on that ship, you didn't worry about nothing, did you? you <laughs> You knew Spock was going to save you. <laughs> okay, now I have had people warn, grow up their Pisces. You've read me before. You can, my, my business card's in the back. You can get on my website, sign up for free newsletters. I got 93 of them out there. But I've written a lot about how you don't, who has Aries children? You don't teach Aries kids by saying, now you be careful now, work like this, and be careful, watch that edge, watch that edge. No, they got to jump first, bang their head. Did you learn? Yeah, okay. <laughs> That's how they learn. And when you teach these Aries or Sagittarian or fire signs to be cautious, you ruin them. They move by instinct. You don't, but they do. And it's so hard for parents, especially Capricorns or Cancers or Virgos who are cautious. Well, you should have looked before you jumped her. No, they shouldn't. No. So that, that basic instinct, which is so beautiful to watch, the God-centered pure instinct and intuition that they have is priceless. You can't touch it. They're going to make mistakes. They're going to sound. How about this? How many, how many Aries do you know who sound like they know what they're talking about? And they, <laughs> they seem like they know what they're talking about. And you have to butt horns with them. No, you don't. Butt horns. And that's how you deal with an Aries. And that's the problem people make with Aries. Their head's strong. The way you deal with Aries is you are be a ram too. And you bang heads and they love it and it's over with and they're done with it in five minutes. And the cancer's, the cancer's six months later. Oh, God. Oh. Remember what he said to me? Oh. And the Aries is like, you're still thinking about that? Okay. So the point is, the baby starts to grow up. The fire can't go on. The, the Aries runs out of steam. And the, and the entity we call the cosmic entity in the book, we call it the soul. We don't know what we're talking about, soul. But we're just using the word. And if anybody tell, if, if one more person tells me the purpose of life, I'm going to kill them. Nobody knows what the purpose of life. And they tell me what makes God mad. Well, you don't know what makes God mad. God is perfect. By definition, he's not mad. It's your own thing. So deal with it up here. By the way, what we're going through now, what we're going through now nationwide, what we're going through now is a big time look in the mirror. That's what's going on. We're going through a tremendous identity crisis. And we're either going to succeed or I don't know what's going to happen. I think made in China is going to be everywhere. <laughs>